Good morning, Manor High. Here we are again doing some chemistry work online. Um, sorry, I meant to bring home my microphone so I sound like I'm in the cave again, but uh, next time. Anyway, acids and bases. Uh, this first part we're going to be doing a lot of review. We already did a lot of this at the beginning of the year, and hopefully you did a lot in first year too. But just a refresher that we have our, our craniest definition of acids and bases. And this is dependent upon water, so the acids and bases have to be aqueous. And when an acid is dissolved in water, it increases hydronium ion concentration, or oftentimes just abbreviated as the hydrogen ion. And bases increase hydroxide ion concentration. And we'll see here in a little bit why this is a very limited definition. But the special role of the hydronium ion, or hydrogen ion, and the hydroxide ion in aqueous solutions is because of this lovely equation that we're going to learn more about later called the self-ionization of water. So you can see that water in general always has hydronium and hydroxide ions in it. So when we're talking about acids and base chemistry, that's why water plays such an important role. Strong versus weak, a strong acid or base ionizes completely, and we talked about those as being strong electrolytes. And now, since we just did equilibrium, these reactions we can see will have a large Kc, a large equilibrium constant. And we are told that we should know our strong acids, the six there, and our strong bases, which are group 1A and 2A metal hydroxides that are soluble. So always remember to keep those in mind. A weak acid or base will only partially ionize, so we're going to have a small Kc, so our reactants are more favored. And we assume that all other acids and bases are weak compared to the strong ones that we know. And we'll, we're going to be heading into calculating some Ka's and Kb's to figure out exactly how weak these acids and bases are. A final note on Arrhenius is evidence, and we see this through the delta H of formation, the neutralization reactions of a strong acid and a strong base. It's always the same. Why? Here we go. <laughs> so like if I take hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, the net ionic equation for any strong acid mixing with any strong base is that hydrogen and hydroxide are going to form water neutralization. And that delta H is always negative 55.9 kilojoules per mole of the hydrogen ion. So that is evidence because the same reaction is occurring in each and every neutralization as Arrhenius predicted. But again, this is just strong acid, strong base. But let's move on because we know we have better definitions like Bronsted Lowry. We view acid base reactions as a proton transfer reaction. Our acids donate the hydrogen ion, the proton bases accept. And so why is this better? Because bases are not just dependent or linked directly with the hydroxide ion. Acids and bases can be ions or molecular substances. And the acid-base reactions do not have to be aqueous, although we just focus primarily on aqueous situations. But as you go further in the subject matter, you'll see that they don't have to be. And we've seen species that can be both acids and bases. And I, I know I've mentioned the word amphoteric before, a substance that can react with acids and bases. Then there's another word you might come across, amphiprotic, which means it has the ability to both gain and lose hydrogen ions. So a lot of our polyprotic acids can lose multiple hydrogens. And so a situation like that can arise. And we'll see an example here coming up. So here's Bronsted-Lowry in action again. So when hydrochloric acid and ammonia are put together and I get rid of my chloride ions, I come up with my net ionic equation of hydronium plus ammonia makes water and ammonium. And so what I can see is that this hydronium is going to donate a hydrogen over to ammonia. And conversely, on the other side, Ammonium donates a hydrogen to water. And so based on our definitions, we have the hydronium 
and the ammonium being acids because they're donating the hydrogen ion, they're donating the proton. Ammonia and water are acting as the bases. And then what we end up having are conjugate acid base pairs. And this is some important terminology you want to get into your noggins. But two species in an acid base reaction, one acid, one base, and they differ by the loss or gain of a proton. So in our example here, ammonium and ammonia are a conjugate acid base pair. The word conjugate just means on the other side. So if you're looking at the forward reaction, then the conjugate acid or base would be on the right. If you're looking at the reverse reaction, then the conjugate would be on the left. And you can see that here. Ammonium is the conjugate acid of ammonia. And ammonia is the conjugate base of the ammonium. So again, it's just depending upon which way you're viewing forward or reverse for the reaction. So here's a little practice. Look at these two equations. First determine what's acting as an acid, what's acting as a base, and then see if you can identify the conjugate acid base pairs. So pause the video and see if you can do that. So our first reaction, hopefully you found that these were our acids and bases, and then our conjugate acid base pairs are carbonic acid and the bicarbonate ion, and hydrofluoric acid and the fluoride ion. Down here, hopefully you found our acids were water and the bicarbonate ion, base, hydroxide, and carbonate ions. And then our pairs are as such. If you have any questions with that, make sure you see me. But again, you're just pairing up the acids and bases on both sides. There is another theory of acids and bases, Lewis acids and bases. You might have talked about this previously, but an acid forms a covalent bond by accepting an electron pair, and bases form a covalent bond by donating an electron pair. And you might remember that Lewis's name is linked with those Lewis structures, Lewis dot structures. So he did a lot of work with the electrons and bonding. Now, this is beyond the scope of the AP exam, which is nice news, but it does explain some things, like first off, the formation, for example, of the ammonium ion. So a hydrogen ion and ammonia get together, and ammonia donates this pair of electrons to the hydrogen ion. And so that's why we end up having this bond, but it comes all from the nitrogen atom. And so it, it will explain some things. It, again, it's not testable, but the formation of complex ions can also be looked at as Lewis acid base reactions. And we're going to look at these a little further down the line, so it might be important. When a metal ion bonds to electron pairs from molecules like water, that's a very common situation. We've done this in lab when we created that complex ion, when we had the copper sulfate and kept adding concentrated ammonium hydroxide until that precipitate disappeared. We created a complex ion. So again, we'll talk about that a little further down the line. But again, the Lewis acids and bases theory and definitions are not part of our AP exam. So let's take a look at relative acid base strength. And there's a good table in your book on page 631 and it's basically a ranking order of our acids and bases. Because when you look at Bronsted-Lowry reactions as a proton transfer reaction, you can look at it as a proton competition. Strong acids will lose their protons easily. Strong bases hold their protons strongly. And so here we see hydrochloric acid versus water. All right. We know that hydrochloric acid is one of our strong acids. And when I look at this in general, that means water is acting as the base here. On the other side, hydronium is the acid, chloride is the ion is the base. And so relative to each other, the hydrochloric acid and water are stronger than the hydronium and chloride ions. They are weaker. Hydronium ion is still considered a stronger acid in the grand scheme of the rankings, but again, relatively to each other, this is how they add up. And so again, here we see the formation of mostly products. Our KC is large, and in general, our acid bases, our acid-base reactions will go in the direction 
of the weaker acid or base. And so when we look at some weak situations, so for example, 0.1 molar acetic acid, we only find about 1% of acetic acid molecules have actually ionized. And if we look at hydrofluoric, similarly, we only show 3% of hydrofluoric acid molecules actually ionizing. So based on this information, again, done experimentally, and the information we just saw, we can start to put together a ranking system. So hydrochloric acid is strongest, then hydronium, then hydrofluoric, and then acetic acid. And so you can see through experiments, that's how they came up with this ranking list of strong versus weak. Now when we got to the strong acids, those six strong acids we talk about, they all ionize 100% in water. It's what we call a leveling effect. So they have to be tested different ways. For example, in a less basic solvent like acetic acid, in an order to find their ultimate rankings. But again, you should check that table out in your book, I believe, yes, page 631, and it shows the ranking of our acids and bases. And what you can deduce from that is that our strongest acids have the weakest conjugate bases, our strongest bases have the weakest conjugate acids, a seesaw effect. And you can see that on that chart. So here's a very specific type question for the following reaction. Decide whether the reactants or products are favored. Well, again, in general, our acid-base reactions will go in the direction of the weaker. So you'd have to look at that chart. And when you do, you find, come on, <laughs> that this will be the favored direction because hydrogen sulfate is a stronger acid than hydrogen cyanide, and the cyanide ion is a stronger base than the sulfate ion. And you can see that on that chart. So the last thing here for this video is molecular structure and acid strength. A little bit of review -y from some of our trends stuff that we talked about. But the strength of an acid depends on how easily that hydrogen ion is lost or removed from whatever it's bonded to. And there's two factors. One, the more polar the bond is, the easier it is to remove that hydrogen ion. And here you see what are called electrostatic potential maps of both acetic acid and sulfuric acid. High electron densities are in red, low densities are in blue, and then intermediate in between. And so you can see for sulfuric acid, the two hydrogens are very blue. For acetic acid, not so much. And so that's one way that they have shown why sulfuric acid is a stronger acid than acetic acid. You can get rid of that hydrogen ion easily. And across a period, this is our dominant factor. Again, a little trend thing. As you go across, our electronegativity is increasing. So this is an example of why hydrofluoric acid is a stronger acid than water. The HF bond is more polar than the HO bond, so the hydrogen's easier to remove. Another factor is that the larger the atom the hydrogen is attached to, the weaker the bond is. So as you go down a group, this is our dominant factor. And again, we talked about adding an occupied energy level so those atoms are bigger. So again, a classic look at our halogens. Hydroiodic acid is stronger than hydrobromic, stronger than hydrochloric, stronger than hydrofluoric. Then we have a couple other small situations to just take a note of. These things called oxoacids. Hydrogen is attached to an oxygen, attached to another element, and the more electronegative that other element is, the stronger the acid. So here we see HOCl stronger than HOBr, stronger than HOI because of their electronegativities. Other oxoacids, the more oxygens you have, the stronger the acid, or I'm sorry, the, hold on. That's better. So here we see perchloric acid is stronger than chloric acid, stronger than chlorous acid, stronger than hypochlorous. And then our last situation is our polyprotics, polyprotic acids and their ions. The smaller the negative charge, the stronger the acid. So phosphoric, stronger than dihydrogen phosphate, stronger than hydrogen phosphate. 
Yay, that was 15 minutes. One more small video to come. See you soon.